welcome back to the course Airline Planning and Optimization. In this lecture, we'll study the crew scheduling problem. In the first part of the lecture, we'll discuss the, this problem, learning some relevant definitions and the main important considerations uh, to take when solving this problem, differentiating between the common practice in Europe and in America. In a second video, we'll discuss how the crew pairing and rostering problems can be formulated followed by a last video in which we'll discuss two techniques that combine can help us to solve the crew scaling problem. In terms of the program, we are in this set of three videos covering the crew scaling problem in the tactical planning section and touching on the MLP models and the shortest path algorithms of our operational research discussions. Let's uh, remember where the crew scaling problem fits in the airline planning framework. So we are addressing the resources allocation part, tactical decision. This uh, problem is solved once the strategic problem is solved and we already have a timetable and the aircraft fleet types assigned to specific flights. The crew scaling problem is naturally solved before we go into operations. But first, let's recognize that the crew scaling problem is perhaps the or one of the most difficult problems to solve in the airline planning framework. If we talk about a company like KLM, we may have to address the problem of uh, solving the monthly rosters of 2,000 cockpit crews and 5,000 cabin crew members, allocating them to more than 500 flights per day, involving 100 aircraft of four or five family types. And these family types also play a role in this crew scaling problem because usually crews are associated with just one single aircraft family. That's the case for cockpit crew, two or three family uh, of aircrafts for uh, cabin crews. And there are many other rules and also the labor agreements that make this problem complex to solve and also reduce the flexibility that we may have to produce an efficient solution. And talking about efficiency, Crew costs are the second largest uh, operating expenses for an airline, normally. So if we help to increase the efficiency of the crew scaling process, even if by a small percentage, we can be saving a lot of money to the airline. So this becomes a very important problem. Let's then move to some of the basic definitions used when discussing the crew scaling uh, problem. The first one is the duty period. A duty period is a sequence of flights or other duties allocated to a crew in a single day. The duty period also considers uh, seats or idle times as short rest periods between flights in the sequence. Before starting and finish each duty period, the crew usually meets to prepare the flights. These periods of preparation in the beginning of the day and report at the end of the day are called brief and debrief respectively. The sequence of duty periods over a set of days is called a pairing. These also include the overnight resting periods, called layovers, and the sequence of days off that may be given to the crew after completing the set of activities related with the duties in the pairing. Each crew member is associated with a crew base. This refers to the airport from which the crew starts the operations at the beginning of the day and ends the operations at the end of the pairing. Finally, in some unavoidable cases, we may have to transport crew in a flight as passengers, repositioning them either to start a flight at a different location than the one where they are, or to transport crew back to their base at the end of their pairing, if they do not finish at their base airport. To this process of flying crew as passengers, we call that end. But what is the crew scaling problem? Well, the goal of this problem is to assign the required crew to perform all flights in our schedule. Eventually, especially for the cockpit crew, we can formulate each flight type or family in separated problems. And the objective is to minimize the crew costs, or if they are almost fixed, to maximize the crew preferences, while respecting uh, regulations either set by the aviation governing agencies or by the airline itself, and by respecting the labor agreements. The solution to this problem should also respect the maximum number of crews available in each airport and the space-time continuity of the schedules generated for each crew member. For some airlines, there is also the requirement of developing balanced schedules in which crews of the same ranking share an equivalent duty load. 
These balance constraints are, in most cases, imposed to guarantee that crews that have their salary as a function of the hours flying have a fair access to flying opportunities to guarantee a balanced salary distribution among crews of the same ranking but potentially located at different airports. As I already said, this is considered to be a very hard problem to solve and to increase the complexity of the crew scaling problem, there are many variations that follow different requirements. For instance, there are several differences between domestic and international or intercontinental operations. The first is usually based on a kind of hub and spoke structure for the crews, in which connections between multiple flights are observed in their schedules and in which every single day could be different from the other. While for the intercontinental operations, the airlines are usually operating a sparse network and each duty is related to flying out and then in to a given destination. This can take several days, involving a rest period at the destination and it ends when the crew is back to the base. There are also differences between crew scaling in Europe and in America. One of them is the way crew are paid and therefore the way we have to access costs associated with duty periods. So in the US, crews are paid based on the time they fly. They have usually a fixed amount paid regardless of the number of hours they fly, but the large amount of the salary comes from the length of their duties plus compensations like accommodation, meals or additional hours that they make. In Europe, crews have normally a monthly salary that does not depend on the number of hours that they fly. It is fixed. It is the same every month regardless. Finally, I would like also to call your attention to the difference between scheduling cabin and cockpit crew. One important aspect is that cabin crew in a flight is determined based on the number of passengers flying. There should be a minimum number of crews per passenger on board, according to regulations. However, for most modern aircraft, we always have two cockpit crews, regardless of the number of passengers being transported. For this reason, cockpit crew are usually coupled in a makeup that stays together for the day, for the short haul operations, or for the full pairing in the case of long haul routes. Cabin crew, on the other hand, may change from flight to flight during the same day, and this may increase the complexity of the problem. The crew scaling problem is, in fact, divided into two smaller but still complex problems, the crew pairing and the crew assignment problems. We start by developing a set of duties, based on the combination of flights for a single day. This set of duty periods is, eventually, the set of all combinations of flights that can be flown in a single day, given the flight schedule from the airline and the time-space continuation. Imagine how many duty periods could be possible for an airline flying more than 100 flights per day. Add to these other duties like training or office hours that may be part of the duties of the crews. The following step is to produce pairings, combining these many duty periods into pairings of several days that respect all regulations and labor agreements. This can vary in length, depending on the airline and type of route, from 4 to about 10 days. And if you can easily have thousands of duty periods, we can have thousands of thousands of pairings possible even for a medium-sized airline. Because the flight schedule is usually fixed for each week in a given season, the crew pairing problem, which includes the definition of the duty periods and pairings, can be solved six to three months in advance. That is, the same pairings are used in the entire season, repeated every week, to create the crew rosters. And the creation of crew rosters is in fact the final step of this process. So based on the pairing selected in the crew pairing problem, the airline produces monthly schedules or rosters by allocating each single crew member to a set of sequential pairings. The result is a monthly roster per crew member with a combination of pairings that respect the regulations in labor agreements and follow crew preferences. In Europe, these preferences are typically declared in flight or leave requests filed before the rostering process uh, finishes, while in America, airlines follow a process of bidding in which each crew member can declare what are the pairings that they would prefer. Let's discuss in more detail the two main problems, the crew pairing and the crew assignment problem, starting with the crew pairing and the creation of duty periods. There are many rules that we have to respect when generating duty periods. The first one is logic. The flight sequences 
have to respect a continuous sequence in terms of space and time. But then there are also regulations and agreements that define, for example, the maximum flight time in a single day or the maximum and minimum idle times between flights and the maximum elapsed time of the entire duty period in a single day, including flights and idle times. The calculation of costs are usually measured in minutes. For the American Airlines, because of the way crew salaries are calculated, it is usually the maximum value between the total flying time, a predefined fraction of the total elapsed time, or an equivalent minimum guaranteed duty pay translated into flight hours. In the parent creation set, new rules have to be considered. For instance, each crew member is allocated to a crew base, the airport from which the crew starts their operations. An airline may have multiple crew bases, but each crew member has a single crew base. So the parents should respect that and should start and end at the crew base so they can then be allocated to crews from that crew base. There are also other common agreements to be respected, such as the maximum number of duty periods per week or per pairing, the maximum resting time that the crew needs to have between duties, and the maximum number of days that the crew may stay away from home. Let me just highlight here the complexity that these rules also bring for the control stage during operations when dealing with disruptions. For instance, if we have a rule that states that crews that arrive after, let's say, 8 p.m. cannot fly on the other day, in the case we do have a pairing involving a flight arriving at 7 p.m. followed by a flight in the next day, starting, let's say, at noon, if we suffer a delay of more than one hour in this flight at 7 p.m., we'll have to remove the flight at noon from the roster of the crew and eventually find someone else, another crew, to cover the flight at noon. We'll not discuss these operational levels in this course, but it's good to have in mind also when solving our crew scaling problem. In terms of cost of the pairings, this usually involves the salary costs and additional costs, including the layover costs associated with the pairings. For American Airlines, the salary cost is usually obtained by computing the maximum of three values. The sum of the costs associated with flight time from all the duty periods in the pairing, or a fraction, FP, of the total elapsed time away from the crew base, this fraction is defined in the labor agreements, or a minimum guaranteed payment regardless if the crew is active or not. This crew pairing, as already said, is usually solved several months before operations. The set of pairings selected for a given period, let's say for a week, is usually fixed for the entire season, for the summer season for instance. However, several boundary requirements may require from us to solve this problem in parts. In Europe, this is usually done in two stages, a weekly problem in which the set of pairings considered per week are chosen, and the transition problem in which we have to consider the weeks of transition between seasons, in which the flight schedule changes. In the US, the process is done in three stages. First, the frequent flights, the ones that are repeated most of the days of the week, are covered in a pairing problem solved for each day of the week. Then the flights with a lower frequency are addressed in a second pairing problem. And in the last stage, again, these transition periods are covered in a new set of pairings. This is an example of what could be a set of pairings to cover a list of flights from an European airline. In this example, we only have the pairings starting from Monday to Thursday. We can see that pairings may have a different duration from 5 to 11 days in this case. The pairings are composed by flight duties in dark blue and resting periods that follow these flight duties in light blue. These resting periods are defined in the labor agreements and, de and depend on the type of flights or the duration of the, the flight duties. Note that these pairings have to cover all flights in the schedule and each flight can only be covered by one and only one pairing. After we do have the pairings, the pairings have to be allocated to crews on a monthly basis. This is the crew assignment problem or crew rostering problem. The result is a working schedule or roster per each crew member, including the pairings with flight duties, resting periods and other activities like trainings and office hours. When selecting the pairings per crew member, a set of rules uh, may apply, like the maximum and in some cases the minimum flight time in a month, the minimum number of consecutive days off or the total number of days off per month, the maximum duty time and the time rest between pairings. 
Costs are not always important when solving this crew assignment problem, since all pairings have to be covered and they, in principle, already provide the least cost solution. So in this crew assignment problem, the goal is more often to satisfy crew preferences, uh, even expressed via the bidding process or via the list of requests filled in by the crews. Another typical objective in this problem is to balance the workload allocated to crews or uh, allocated to different crew bases. The crew pairing and the crew assignment problems are solved separately, both in practice and in the academic literature. The reason being the complexity of both problems, especially when considering a set of rules and agreements which can widely vary per crews. For instance, some crews may work only part-time or have special agreements due to their seniority or having specific bonus for belonging to a specific crew base. But they are also solved separately due to the different times that they are solved and the frequency that they are solved. There are also differences in the way that the crew assignment is run in both American and European airlines. In the US, a bid line or preferential bidding process is followed. First, a set of lines of pairings are built by the airline. In the second stage, each crew member has a chance to bid in his or her preferred set of lines. The airline then uses normally a seniority rule to allocate these lines of pairings to each crew. In Europe, on the other hand, there is only one stage. The schedules are computed by the airline already completed, in which individual requests, such as day-offs, requests to fly a specific route, and the needs for training are considered when building the roster for each crew member. Here I present a timeline comparison of the bid lines and the rostering approach followed by most American and European airlines, respectively. Of course, that this process changes per airline and it can be different for different fleet types and between cabin and cockpit crew. But a typical sequence for an American airline involves the generation of the bid lines by the airline up to two months before operations. Then the crew has about two to three weeks to submit their bids and one month before operations, the airline publishes the allocation of lines to each crew member. In the rostering process, the crews are the ones starting the process communicating their preference and requests up to six or eight months before operations. Then the airline has to process all these requests, communicate which ones are accepted, and produce the roster to be ready once more one month before operations. In both cases, there is always a process of adjusting or managing the crew allocation solution due to disruptions like the illness of some crews. And this is an example of a crew roster for 36 crew members, each per row in this table, involving flight duties and rest periods. The colors here, the green, blue and, and grey, are not relevant. They indicate different moments in which the pairings were allocated to a specific crew. I hope this overview gave you a good idea of what is the, the crew scaling problem and how complex it could be. In the next couple of lectures, we'll discuss how to formulate both the crew pairing and the crew allocation problem and how to solve these problems. I'll see you there.